Hello and welcome. A very good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I, Dr. Udevir Gandhi, a prosthodontist, welcome you all to the Dental Council of India platform for virtual learning on behalf of the President, Dental Council of India, Dr. Dibendu Majumdar, and his team. I welcome one and all to this 14th webinar of the DCI Continuing Dental Education Effort. Firstly, I hope and pray that you all are keeping good health. I think this is one of the most uh, difficult times that we are passing through, both physically and mentally. But I'm sure we will all bravely come out of this pandemic very soon. I pray to Almighty to give us all strength to do the same. The Dental Council of India, ladies and gentlemen, is constantly devising ways and means of upgrading the level of dental teaching and practice in the country. One such novel effort, initiative, is the webinars which you are seeing. This probably is a very apt, useful and productive endeavor in these challenging times, which you would agree is more virtual than physical. I'm really very happy that so many of us are attending these webinars and making full use of the knowledge and information that the highly efficient and dedicated speakers are coming forth with. And as you would all appreciate, that it takes a lot of planning and executional effort in preparing and presenting such webinars. My thanks goes out to my own teacher, the President, Dental Council of India, Dr. Majumdar, whose vision is what we are seeing here, the Executive Committee of the Dental Council of India for their constant efforts and support, the Webinar Subcommittee, all the members of Dental Council of India, the staff of Dental Council of India office, and of course, my special thanks to Dr. Virinder Goel and Mukesh Ji. Well, there are instructions for all of you, which I'm sure you're familiar with. I would just point out a couple of them which are really important. At the time of registration, ladies and gentlemen, please fill in complete and proper details so that they can be captured for generating your certificates and the CDE points. No requests or for any change, modification later on would be unfortunately entertained. Also, please note that the certificates for such webinars will be sent to you on your registered email within three days of the conclusion of each webinar. For those who have attended such these webinars, uninterruptedly. Please do check your junk email or spam, etc. as well. Sometimes, you know, the certificate email could be in, in there instead of your inbox. I'm really happy to announce the highest attendance in the last webinar, the 13th webinar, Saraswati Dental College, Lucknow, Sardar Patel Postgraduate Institute of Dental and Medical Sciences, Lucknow, Vishnu Dental College, Andhra Pradesh, St. Joseph Dental College, Andhra Pradesh, and GSL Dental College and Hospital, Rajamandri. Well, ladies and gentlemen, today we have a very, very sought after teacher in the field of prosthodontics, who is a diplomat of International College of Oral Implantology, the former chair and head of prosthodontics, Sri Ramchandra University, Chennai. He is the co-author of a very, very popular 
textbook in prosthodontics. The textbook of prosthodontics is the name. He has more than 80 articles published in indexed peer-reviewed journals. And currently, he is the chairman of the Indian Board of Prosthodontics. And of course, a very dear friend of mine who would be speaking on the treatment strategies in prosthodontics in general dental practice. Over to Dr. T.V. Padmanabhan. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Gandhi, for a very nice and a very warm welcome and introduction. I bring warm greetings from Chennai. At the outset, I would like to thank the President of the Dental Council of India for conceiving such a wonderful idea where there is a good dissipation of knowledge through this webinar platform. I also appreciate the efforts put in by the team behind this, especially Dr. <coughs> Mukesh sir and uh, Dr. Uh, Janinda for uh, Virenda for uh, uh, making this happen. Special thanks to Dr. Rajkumar also, who's also a good friend of mine. Whenever a patient comes with a fractured tooth, the first thing that we do is to make an x-ray and then check whether there is a pulpal involvement. If there is going to be a pulpal involvement, we do a root canal treatment and do the necessary, uh, you know, like foundation work to make sure that the final counts are instituted. The next count, the next uh, question from the patient will be, can they last a lifetime? If they have asked this particular question about 15, 20 years back, I would have said yes, yes, and double yes, because I was, I was, I was not very well experienced. About 30 years back, I started my practice, and if they have asked this question 30 years back, I should have said yes, it will last. But what is the criteria for a successful restoration? The restoration remains in the place, absence of recurrent caries, marginal accuracy, and perfect aesthetics, maintain perfect anatomy and relationship with the neighboring tooth and the opposing tooth, good periodontal health, and most importantly, the patient comfort. But after about 30 years of practice, when a patient comes back to you, maybe around 15, 20 years later, we always see our own work in shambles. Sometimes there is destruction of the crown that we have given, the adjacent teeth are badly decayed, and if they're going to ask the same question to me, can they last a lifetime? Now my answer will be changed and I will always say, no, it is not expected to service you for the rest of your life. There is an expiry, there is a life expectancy of your restoration and you have to make sure that it is as long as possible. So what is a failure? Inability or inadequacy of dental restoration or a prosthesis to perform as expected is considered to be a failure. What are the causes? The causes can either be an inherent factor or an induced factor out of the inherent factor which most of us will never be able to change are the different kinds of occlusal loading during eating temperature fluctuations because of hot coffee and cold ice creams ph changes and fluctuations and uh, the oral environment is always wet microorganisms are very many and there are stag stagnation points and uh, shelter points where there is a good amount of growth of bacteria which is deleterious for the restoration as well as the tooth. What are the induced factors? Out of all the induced factors, the most dangerous is the poor maintenance. The patient, if he's going to think that after a crown is instituted, there is no need to brush the teeth, he is absolutely wrong. It is our responsibility to make sure that maintenance is being done very meticulously so that you are able to increase the longevity of service of your restorations. Selection of the restorative materials, sometimes we do make a mistake on, uh, to compromise or to evaluate or to you know, compensate for the, for the finan financial commitment. So there may be some mistakes in the selection of the restorative material, but the design preparation or preparation uh, designing and the, the other diagnostic procedures and treatment planning, most often the dentists are extremely meticulous in carrying out the best of the treatment possible for the patients. So what is a life of a prosthesis? If you're going to think that this is going to service for the rest of the patient's life, it is wrong. All the prosthesis are deleterious to the structures in the oral cavity. Failures are sometimes inevitable. We are making an effort to reduce this to the minimum. And most importantly, DVANS principle is thought of about preservation of what remains is more important than meticulous replacement of what is lost. 
failure may be repairable or sometimes you have to change the treatment plan as such. Most failures are related to aging, poor maintenance by the patient and rarely because of poor planning and execution by the operator or the dentist. So a patient comes to you after about 15 years and this is the situation most of your facings have chipped off, the adjacent teeth have become decayed and the prosthesis is loose. You have to either change all these things, repeat or you have to redo the whole prosthesis and then plan something more different which is more comfortable to the patient. There are lots of articles and most of them do say that there is a life expectancy. About 40% failures in 641 bridges apartment exhibited periapical lesions after 10 years of service. So if you are able to give a serviceable prosthesis for about 10 to 15 years time, I think it is a good treatment planning and execution. And if you're going to have a look at a three unit fixed partial dentures, there are quite a number of failures, especially in all ceramic restorations, but the amount or the number of failures with a single uh, crown with all ceramics is relatively less. So if you're going to say that there is no failure, I don't think we will be able to accept it. There are failures. We are only trying to reduce the incidence of failure. So I'm going to be talking about the retreatment strategies in prosthodontics, especially in general dental practice. At this juncture, I would like to thank the moderator, my dear friend, Dr. Uday Veer Gandhi, who is one of the very known prosthodontists and he is a specialist in maxillofacial prosthodontics. I should say that he is one of the early prosthodontists to bring in this speciality to our country. He is also an executive committee member of uh, the Asian Academy of Osseo Integration, vice president of the uh, Asian Academy of Prosthodontics, which is extremely prestigious, and he brings a lot of pride and proud moments to India. Thank you, Dr. Uday, for giving this opportunity also to speak. I'll be talking first about the fixed prosthodontics retreatment uh, strategies. The causes of failure in a fixed prosthodontics are either biological, it can be mechanical, it can be aesthetic, or very rarely it can be psychogenic. So a tabular column of this is going to very clearly indicate these are the things which are. So we will discuss one after the other. The retreatment classification is, there is there's not much of literature. There's only one literature written by one Dr. John Joy, who is very much from India. He is very much from India and he has published it almost about 10 years back. And he has classified the retreatment uh, strategies for fixed restorations. He classified as class one to six, class one correctable with, with, uh, with without replacement. Foundation requires repair in uh, class two, in class three, restoration, replacement, class four and class five and class six. And class six where the fixed restoration is going, going to be abandoned and you're going to change into a removable prosthesis. So this is the only classification of retreatment for fixed partial denture available in the literature and that too by an Indian, we are so very proud of it. To concise this, the retreatment can be either via repair or you can repeat or you can replan. So we have concised this into three remedy, the repair, repeat and the replan. So in this particular uh, presentation, I'm going to be showing few cases, examples, so that it, you will have a better understanding. So first we'll take up the pulpal degeneration, tooth generation, and the caries. This is a common situation. After the crown has been fixed, the patient comes back after about say three or four years time with the abutting tooth having a carious lesion. Like you can see in all the three situations, there are carious lesion abutting the uh, <clears throat> crowns or the restorations. A clinical example of is this, a patient comes to me, after say about six or seven years, I have not done anything for this particular patient. He, she says that she has done the crowns of about six or seven years back and some restorations. A closer look uh, uh, of the anterior, upper anterior teeth shows that all the teeth abutting the crowns have decay and they have been restored with some kind of composite restorations. And you're able to see the distal of canine has got a composite, the mesial has also got a composite and uh, the left central incisor distally and mesially has got a composite restoration which is fractured, mesial of lateral and the canine is also affected by caries primarily because of poor contact relationship. They have not maintained the contact relationship that could be the cause for food stagnation and <clears throat> that would have been the nidus for the caries propagation and 
all the teeth abutting or abutting surfaces or the crowns and restorations have been affected by caries. So the complaints are mesial surface uh, of one three has got a decay and poor contact was the reason, food stagnation and patient was not at all happy about the aesthetics also. So what was the treatment, retreatment strategies? The repair was not possible and replanning was not essential. So we have decided to repeat the processes and give restorations for the cavities in the mesial of 1, 3 and 2, 3 to complete the restorations. So the rationale is the teeth were sound, the endodontic treatment was possible, especially for the left lateral incisor. There's no periapical lesion. Attached gingiva was adequate and the support for the prosthesis and the periodontal treatment will also be quite successful. So we took up this particular case and did the necessary foundation requirements and gave a ceramic crown for all the four anteriors and composite restorations for the canines. So this is how it looks anterior. The gingival health is at its best. There is no problem at all with the gingival because of the uh, biologically acceptable nature of the ceramic. And uh, this is the lingual surface and this is how she came. This is how we gave her the smile as well as the restoration. And I feel this is going to last her for a lot of time. There are always some questions. Why is that you have gone for a crown and why not a repeat of composites? It all depends upon the individual operator. I am not, I know very well that I am not very good at composite resins. I know a lot of people, uh, <clears throat> especially who are practicing hysteric dentist, you will be able to manage exceptionally well with composites also. But you have to know whether you are good at composites or ceramics or whatever is your strength, you kindly utilize this thing to give the best to the patients. The next situation is where there is endodontic uh, failure, periodontal failure, tooth perforations, and there is also a subquantic inflammation. This is a very classical case, which came to us uh, after almost about 12 years of your fixed restoration, where the fixed restoration was made out of metal and acrylic. And the maintenance of the particular patient was extremely poor, as you can very well see, there is uh, a severe gingival inflammation and uh, she also has an RPD in the lower jaw and when we removed the bridge which was a little loose this was the condition of the tooth the tooth was very cheesy there was multi-surface carious lesion and this is how the x-rays looked there is no contact of the retainer to the uh, remaining tooth structure and uh, the post was not in a, uh, was not adequate at all there's a lot of fracture of the tooth and so this is the occlusal surface and there is the teeth look absolutely cheesy the multi-surface caries lesion there's a severe inflammation on the right side premolar and the molar uh, area in the subpontic areas so we have decided to go in for replanning removal of the teeth repair was not at all possible because there is a biological failure of both tooth as well as the periodontium repetition is only going to increase the possibility of failures. So we have decided to go in for replanning. So the first thing that we did was to rationalize this thing. The teeth suffered multi-surface caries. The lesion was very big and very, uh, the tooth became very soft and cheesy and there was no other go but to remove because if we have to give a crown, the finish line will be sub -gingival. We will never be able to achieve a good finish line. And so periodontal health will not be also maintained. So we have decided to remove all the teeth and place an implant immediately. And this is how the patient presented after three months of implantation and abutments were placed, prepped uh, outside the oral cavity, tried inside, and then a metal trine was given. And this is how the final prosthesis, a cemented prosthesis was given to achieve a good aesthetics. And this is how the occlusal service, this is almost about one year of the institution of the prosthesis. Now, what is the most important thing is that we have motivated the patient to do a good maintenance because maintenance was a greatest difficulty for this particular patient. So motivational <clears throat> sessions were given or uh, 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 spent, the time was spent to motivate her to do a good maintenance. This is how the smile has improved and this is how the x-rays look post-operatively. The, the, the third important aspect of biological failure is increase or decrease in vertical dimension or occlusal wear. This is the patient who came to us after almost about say 12, 13 years of uh, institution of crowns. 
Again, we have not done the crowns, but he claims that the crowns were given about 12, 13 years back. And what is the obvious thing is that there is a deviation of the mandible to the right. The patient is biting more on the right side and uh, there is a asymmetry of right to left. When we open the mouth and this is what we see, there are a lot of fracture of the teeth and there is very minimal contact. The contact is only on the right side uh, in the premolar area that could explain why there is a deviation. This is the x-ray. The right mandible has lost one of its abutment. The distal abutment has undergone severe burnout loss and all these things would have caused a loss of the bridge along with the abutment. And what are the chief complaints? Pain in the jaw, unable to eat, unable to talk for a long time. There is a ringing noise and he says it is life is frustrating because he is not able to eat properly and talk properly. The reasons for the discomfort is multiple failed crowns and there are also prematurity following failure of the crowns. There is a CR, centric relation, centric occlusion discrepancy, there is a decrease in vertical dimension, the loss of teeth and the teeth contact has made eating absolutely difficult. These are the major discomforts. So we're going to have a closer look. The crown on the right upper lateral has been fractured. The veneers in the lower anterior have been lost. There is decay in the anterior teeth primarily because of the anterior teeth becoming the masticatory apparatus. There's loss, loss of tooth structure. Posteriorly, there is no teeth at all. As you can see, variable collapse of the vertical dimension and the habitual deviation to the right. And if you're going to see the right side, as you can very well see, there is only contact of four teeth and the anterior abutment of the bridge is lost. And it is uh, in the mandible also, the patient would have lost the bridge. And on the left side, the canine has lost along with the crown. Uh, there is a fracture at the neck. There is a fracture of the abutment in the mandibular distal most tooth. Again, there is fracture collapsing the vertical dimension to a large extent. So the, totally the patient has got a lot of complaints. Unfortunately, he underwent a lot of uh, 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 dental work, most of which has failed primarily because he has not taken any care about the prosthesis or the restorations. It is very ideal for us to motivate the patients to come for at least an annual checkup to know whether the prosthesis and the fillings are performing as it should. If they are going to come after 14 or 15 years, there is a bright possibility of failures like this. So the observations are this, as I said already, the treatment strategy will be a repair. Repair, there is absolutely no opportunity because there is no tooth structure at all. Repetition is also not a very great idea because we have no foundation at all to bring in again foundation and then a cast post and then give a crown. I don't think it's possible because in few situations, we have also lost the teeth. So we have decided to replan and re uh, give a new set of processes which will make or regain the vertical dimension and also give a positive contact. The teeth were sound and no secondary decay was seen and the periodontium was absolutely healthy. The badly decayed and hopeless teeth were not in the very strategic position because if you're going to extract, we can still proceed with a fixed prosthesis itself. There is no need for a removable prosthesis and the altered jaw relationship, the deviation as well as the collapse vertical dimension is absolutely possible to correct. So what are the treatment objective? The treatment objective was to restore the lost vertical dimension, lost tooth structure, re-establish new horizontal relationship, develop a new engram, transfer this data to the articulator, develop new occlusal relationship for the new uh, uh, increase in vertical dimensions. So how do we normally go about? The most important thing is that you have to have a loose object. There is no compromise at all. You need not have to say that only prosthodontists are trained because if you have a desire to learn, I'm sure you will be able to learn all these things and practice. And especially you are doing a full mouth rehabilitation. All these steps have to be, have to be followed. There is no compromise at all. Increase judicially the vertical dimension, establish new horizontal relationship, trial denture to check the posterior contact and the patient comfort. And after the patient is comfortable, you can transfer this anatomy and proceed with the final prosthesis. So I'm going to give you one example where there is an absolute collapse of vertical dimension. If you're going to have a look, there is no posterior teeth at all. The anterior teeth is the masticatory apparatus. There is hardly any vertical dimension. You are not even able to see the lower anterior teeth. 
In this particular situation, we increase the vertical dimension by about almost about four millimeters. And this is how it looked. Look at the sudden increase in the lower one third. The prominence of the lower lip in a collapsed vertical dimension is totally reversed with the prominence of the maxillary uh, upper lip, which is more pronounced in this particular situation. So we make a horizontal relationship using a Lucia jig, which is made out of acrylic. We can use it. We can, we can even fabricate it in the clinic. And then a good a tracing is uh, achieved. You make a record. And with that record, you articulate, send it to the laboratory. In this situation, we have uh, fabricated a temporary before the preparation with the help of uh, computer aided machining and uh, designing. And this is how the prosthesis looked. And we fitted the prosthesis. It's a temporary milled plastic prosthesis before the preparation. And we tried this to know whether the increase in vertical dimension is accepted by the patient and whether the posterior contact are satisfactory. And this smile said, yes, everything was satisfactory. So from here on, we just proceeded preparation of the teeth. And this is how this particular case came up. We prepped all the teeth. The only thing that we took into consideration was that we did not replace the full complement of teeth. We had a shortened dental arch of only up to six, or that is six plus six, 12 teeth. And this is how uh, the appearance of the anterior or the uh, uh, anterior view. The right lateral view uh, showing an absolute occlusal contact. There is no discrepancy at all. CR and the CU was coinciding so that the masticatory efficiency is going to be increased. Look at the gingival health. It is absolutely fine even after about an years of service. And the occlusal uh, view, the gingival health is at its pink. And uh, the occlusal view of the mandibular teeth and the smile of the particular patient. And this is how the patient looked after. What is that very obvious thing is that there is no more a deviation. The lower one third face is absolutely regained. And when you compare the before and after, the facial symmetry has been achieved. The lip has got a little more of prominence. The lower one third face has been regained. The next we will discuss about the mechanical failures. In the mechanical failures, most important thing is a loss of retention. Loss of retention is primarily because of a rotational failure more often we come across because of a short axial length. A very classical situation is this. A patient was referred to me with a repeated bridge failure. And on examination, it looked as if the anterior teeth have been prepared more than what was required. So the axial length of the tooth was not sufficient to resist the rotational forces. So <clears throat> the causes of the bridge failure was poor axial length and the rotational failures. So what are the treatment uh, options? Retreatment options would have been repair or replan or repeat. I prefer to go in for repetition after doing a little bit of work on the foundation teeth. Teeth were sound and the endodontic treatment was possible and the periodontum was adequate so that it will support the prosthesis. So the first we did was to do the root canal treatment and we increased the clinical height with the help of a post, a prefabricated post. The teeth were absolutely sound to take up the prefabricated post. And this is how the, <clears throat> uh, 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 the tooth looked after the axial length with the force and core restoration. From now, it is absolutely easy for us to give a restoration which is going to service the patient for a much longer period of time. You are able to appreciate a clear increase in height of the axial surface, which will resist the rotational forces. The next is a connector failure. Connector failure is very often primarily because of either a technician's uh, mistake or the clinician's diagnostic mistake. I will show you a very clinical uh, classical case where this particular patient we have given uh, two pontic six and seven, five and eight has retainers given a prosthesis after functioning for almost, almost about three years time. The patient came with a fracture between six and seven pontic area. And when we opened, <clears throat> uh, when we used a probe to relieve, it was a little mobile, we used a probe uh, in the retaining area, the whole uh, fractured frag fragment popped out of the mouth. And this is how it looked. The tooth was quite sound. There's a very minimal uh, secondary decay beneath the preparation. And you're able to see the fracture in the connector. The, normally what will happen is the connector area will have some uh, voids in the casting, which could be the cause. But unfortunately, this 
is a diagnostic mistake that we have to accept. The, the connector width is very, very less. The occlusive gingival height of the connector has to be thick enough. A minimum of five millimeters is essential to resist the occlusal loading. In this particular case, it was very less, and so the fracture was, uh, uh, was, has happened, and uh, the cause is the supra eruption. So we will discuss this particular case. We wanted to repair. Repair was not possible, and uh, repetition <coughs> uh, uh, was much, much more uh, deleterious because you're going to come back, come back with the patient is going to come back with the same failure. So we replanned the whole thing. The teeth were sound, periodontium was adequate, and the causes was the failure was the supra eruption and not regaining the occlusal plane, which is the most important factor. So this is a very classical situation. We normally, we normally overlook this. Whenever you don't have a tooth in the opposing arch, there is supra eruption, as you can see on the right side upper jaw. During treatment planning, this has to be included. And the first and the foremost thing is to regain the occlusal plane. As you can see diagrammatically in this particular picture, after the loss of tooth, there is supra eruption of the <clears throat> opposing tooth. Unless we regain, they will never be able to achieve a good connector uh, width. So this is another classical case where the, you are able to see there's an absolute collapse. And look at the occlusal plane of the maxilla. It is more like a parabola. So you have to first regain the lost occlusal plane by giving uh, a multiple crowns or whatever. Or uh, if it is very minimal, we can even do a very minimal enomaloplasty and regain the lost occlusal plane. So after you gain the occlusal pain, you refabricate the whole thing and then give a prosthesis like a regular fixed partial denture. The next uh, <clears throat> situation is a marginal leakage. This is a typical case where the patient came. This was done almost about 15, 20 years back where in those days they were using only an alloy called Auden alloy or Japanese gold. We don't use it anymore now. Even in the laboratories, we don't use as a technique alloy, we don't use this. And uh, this was used clinically almost about 25 years back. And uh, the patient came with the margins which are absolutely open and the bridge was loose. And uh, <clears throat> the problem was uh, the marginal leakage. Marginal leakage could be because of poor finish line configuration, poor lab accuracy, and we have not made a good impression and the material and the metal of choice is also very important. So in this situation, what, was, what were the choice? You can either repair or you can replant. So we have decided to repeat because it did not require anything, no uh, work on the foundation. So we have decided to repeat the whole prosthesis. The teeth were sound, the periodontium was adequate to support the prosthesis. Cause of the failure was there was no uh, retraction, impression was very poor. So the first thing that we did was remove the old <clears throat> crown and uh, re-prepared that particular tooth. We made an impression a good impression with retraction and a new processes with a better material, porcelain infused uh, metal was used for this particular situation. And we gave a prosthesis which is functioning as of now. The next is the wear. In the mechanical failures, wearing is very often we see, especially when you don't have the right choice of the material. This is a classical situation. What you see here is a perforation on the occlusal surface of an anterior bridge. So, we're going to have a closer look at the apex of that particular tooth. There is an apical abscess also. And the patient was absolutely asymptomatic. He came for a routine checkup during that particular visit. We forced him to remove that particular uh, acrylic, acrylic fixed prosthesis. And this was the tooth. The tooth below or the foundation had multiple surface caries lesion and it was, it was, it was going in for failure. <clears throat> so perforation in the prosthesis normally is because of the wear of the prosthesis. It can be because of the poor canine guidance, poor choice of metal, especially if you're going to use acrylics and maybe an inadequate preparation. All these things are related to the operator's choice. So what was the uh, choice of treatment? Can be repaired? We didn't want to repair. Can we repeat? That is also not possible. So we have to replan because the foundation needed some more work. So the rationale is teeth are salvageable, root canal followed by a post to gain good axial length. Refabrication of the prosthesis with a better material was chosen. And you are able to see sometimes after a long time usage, a patient comes saying that there is some sound coming whenever he is biting 
and some bubbles coming at the occlusal surface. When there is a very minute perforation, there is, if you're going to press on the pontic area, you'll be able to see bubbles coming out of the occlusal surface, especially on the retainer. And this is a common situation you come across because of perforation on the occlusal surface because of a long period of usage. When you talk about metal exposure, there are two kinds of metal exposure. One on the right, as you see in the premolar, is a metal exposure because of correcting the prematurity. Whereas on the left side, in the molar, you are able to see another metal exposure, which was not there during cementation, but it came after a few days. This is primarily because of the fact that during casting, when there is a small perforation, the technicians normally would tend to close the perforation with the help of a ceramic. And this will hold good for some time, but during cementation or during occlusal loading, because of the hydrostatic pressure, it may pop up and you will be able to see a perforation through and through in the metal. So it is always prudent and <clears throat> very much advisable to look through light uh, from the intaglio surface of a restoration to check whether the metal ceramic restoration was, has got any metal perforation. If there is so, it is preferable to repeat the prosthesis rather than to repair the prosthesis. Fracture of the tooth is another common mechanical failure we normally come across. And <clears throat> as we have been advised right from the uh, early days of dentistry, any root canal treated tooth should be crowned. So we do crown. And unfortunately, we do come across fractures also. The causes of fracture most often are an improperly or very poorly designed pose, poor fit of the pose. And if you're not given the pose, it is because of uh, the, 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 the reduced amount of neural feedback leading to increased loading of the endodontic, primarily the poor macular receptor, like a proprioception, it has got a poor macular receptor. You, you unintentionally give a lot of loading resulting in fracture. A very classical situation, the patient comes to you with just a post hanging in the tooth. The post is also slightly mobile and the crown has come off. This is a classical situation you come across. And what are the treatment options? The treatment option is repair is not possible. Replanning is not required. So we have decided to repeat the processes with an additional component, namely the cast post. So rational is failure is because of poor choice of post length and diameter. Tooth were sound and endodontic treatment was possible. Attached ginger was adequate to support the prosthesis. Periodontium was good, so there was no need for us to remove the tooth. So we retained the teeth and then did a re-root canal treatment and we worked with an endodontist. Now the endodontists <clears throat> they, uh, are coming out with exceptionally good results, almost 99.9% .9 results with uh, endodontics. So we have no uh, reservations about utilizing the services of these people for this particular work. So after the root canal and we prepared the tooth, a minimal ferrule was given and a cast post was cemented in place. And this is the final respiration, which is again functioning for quite some time. So the long-term success is for, especially the post and core restoration is ferrule effect. Remember, these are the key things whenever you're planning for a cast post restoration, do not overlook these three important factors. If you're going to have a a, a, a very textbook styled post and core restoration, these three should be taken into consideration. And these three are the most important success criteria for cast post restorations. So the clinical point is prepare the tooth before you decide which kind of post, whether it is a prefabricated or a custom made, make sure there is at least two millimeter of tooth structure available to give a good ferrule effect and check the ratio between the diameter of the axial so that the rotational forces can be assessed an apical GP of three to four millimeters is mandatory. Most important, maintain the biological width is absolutely essential. Another situation of the fracture of the tooth is this, where the fracture is below the gingiva. And uh, we plan <coughs> the planning was uh, to, to, to repair was not possible. And replanning, again, was the ideal choice. Repetition was not the best choice. So we decided to replan the whole thing. Now the tooth was sound, endodontic was possible, but you may come across a restorative failure because finish line configuration cannot be achieved because the fracture is subcrestal. So it's going to be very difficult for us to give a good finish line. So we have decided to remove the tooth and go in for a rim plant. So automatically we just raise the flap, remove the tooth, place the implant, and 
waited for Austrian integration, and this is the result after the prosthesis was given. And this is also a functioning prosthesis for more than about eight years' time. So you plan whether to go in for a retreatment, if at all you're going for a retreatment, you either repair or you repeat or you replan go to and one up, uh, uh, one up kind of treatment. <clears throat> so the aesthetic failure is the third important uh, major factor and the immediate are very, very rare because the minute you see the color does not match, the patient is not going to accept and all the dentists who are absolutely dedicated to their profession will never accept a mismatch. So whenever there is a mismatch, we normally say, no, we don't want to go in for this. And we might as well go in for a better a color matched situation. So you have to essentially call uh, the technician so that he matches or gives especially, especially some characteristics of green bee. The most important or the most often mistake that happens is whenever you're treating a discolored tooth. Here is a case where you have a discolored tooth and a normal tooth where both have to go in for a crown. This is how it looks. And after the preparation, the stump color is different. But when you are going to advise or give a communication to the lab, you always say it is A2 or A3 with an A4 uh, gingival uh, color. So he will fabricate. And at the end of the day, when you cement, this is going to reflect through or the, the, the color of the stump is going to reflect through the metal free ceramic restoration. And this is how it is going to look like. There is a grayish or a brownish hue, which will add color to the discolored tooth. And this is how it looks. This is distinctly, there is a change in color. So if these things will not be acceptable by the patient. So this is the immediate aesthetic problem, which can be rectified. <clears throat> this is how it looks. And after rectification, this is how it looks. And I mean, the patient is accepted for this uh, very minimal change in discoloration, which is acceptable, right? A delayed aesthetic complication is primarily because of long time usage and wrong usage and wrong uh, uh, choice of material. This is a case where the patient has undergone a veneers for the maxillary anterior teeth. And uh, this is how it looked. The bonding was not very satisfactory. And uh, we have decided to take up this particular case and retreat this. The retreatment uh, strategy was either to go in for repair. Repair was not possible. There was no need for a replanning. So we have decided to repeat the whole process after removing the old uh, restorations. The tooth was uh, sound, periodontium was healthy, choice of restorative material was not satisfactory. So we have decided to go in for a metal free ceramic, uh, 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 lithium disilicate ceramic veneers for this particular case. And we added one more tooth, namely the premola. Look at the gingival health, look at the color, it is absolutely satisfactory. The patient was also quite happy about the whole contour of and the color of the tooth. And uh, this is the smile. And another case where soon after the uh, composites, there was a solid reaction from the gingiva resulting in some gingival hypoplasia. There's a lot of food stagnation. It was attracting a lot of food debris. And after the composite restoration, the patient was not very happy. And the treatment strategies included replanning rather than repeating the whole thing. Because it is, as I told you, it is my personal choice. As an operator, if I feel that I'm good at ceramics, I would like to go in for ceramics rather than to go in for other restorative materials because I know I'm not good at that. So the rational is the tooth was sound, poor gingival aesthetics, <clears throat> and crown length to width was not very satisfactory according to the golden proportions, and the choice of uh, the restorative material according to me was not satisfactory, so I decided to go in for ceramics. The first is to gain the good uh, golden proportion, I went for uh, a, a crown lengthening to get the a uh, crown length to width ratio properly and uh, a ceramic veneer was cemented in place soon after uh, the cementation it looked like this and from here and we have achieved this kind of aesthetics look at the gingival contour everything seems to be quite satisfactory and the gingival health is also very satisfactory and you also come across failures in metal ceramic restorations in metal ceramic restorations you normally come across ceramic chipping especially you're going for multiple unit uh, fixed partial dentures, ceramic chipping is quite common. If you're going to see a ceramic chip like this, it is absolutely safe. We'll be able to save the tooth. We need not have to do repeat the whole process. So what is the uh, uh, treatment strategy? It's just a repair, just a repair. It is just a cohesive fracture within the ceramic. 
So we can always repair it with the help of a composite, but do not forget to use the silent coupling agent after etching. So you isolate the tooth and you etch with, with uh, uh, hydrofluoric acid as recommended and use silent coupling agent, build up with composite. It looks absolutely fine. Make sure there is no occlusal interference, especially at lateral excursive moment. If the fracture is going to involve the metal and there is a metal exposure, it is going to be a little difficult. Again, we can repair. There is no need for us to redo the whole processes. The most important thing is you have to prepare the surface of the metal, mask the metal, and then before masking, you have to etch, and then you also condition the metal with a four metal bond, and this is how it goes. You etch the surface of the metal, or you sandblast the uh, metal, apply four metal resin, use an opaque, and then composite resins. Most important, again, in this is to relieve the occlusal contact, so this there is no prematurity during excursive movements. But if the fracture of the ceramic bridge is much bigger, more than what 50% is exposed, is it advisable to repeat or remove the whole bridge? It is not going to be possible and it is very painful to remove, especially if you're going to use a full arch desperation. And I don't think it is very acceptable for us to remove the whole uh, bridge. So in this situation, the ideal will be to repeat the whole uh, situation only for that particular ground. So how is that we have done? We have removed the uh, ceramic in that particular, made an impression, and then made a thimble out of uh, the uh, impression that we have made and cemented that in, pros, <clears throat> in position. So this is how it looked. We removed the whole uh, ceramic, got a good clearance, and uh, made a lot of serrations in the, the metal also, made an impressions, and uh, this is how the model looks. The contact has not been broken, a thimble of ceramic, metal ceramic is fabricated, and this is how it looks. And it was cemented in place using a four meter resin like your Panavia X. And look at the gingival contouring, it looks absolutely fine. There is no problem at all whatsoever. So this is the way by which you will be able to save the rest of the bridge. It is not very acceptable in this situation to change the whole bridge because it is going to cost the patient to a large extent. So this is how it was fractured. This is possible or this is indicated only when the fracture of the ceramic, metal ceramic respiration is more than about 50% exposure of the metal. So the removal prosthesis also has a lot of uh, retreatment and failures. And uh, this is the most common. You have only four or five teeth anteriorly. And normally we give a flipper like this. This flippers will never ever look because it is impossible for the patient to bear it's very heavy, it will drop down while opening. The patient will not be able to eat. There will be a lot of food stagnation. And what is the treatment strategies will be to either replan, <clears throat> to repair or repeat. Repetition is not going to help. So it is preferable to replan. So in this particular situation, the rationale is you have to reduce the amount of rotational forces. So what we have done is prep all the four teeth and they gave a fixed respiration with a distal ball. And this is how it looked. And this is the prosthesis without any clasp with two attachments anteriorly. This is going to prevent a lot of rotation. The patient is going to be extremely comfortable. There is no clasp, aesthetically very acceptable, and it is extremely retentive. The patient will be very comfortable. This is another patient who was really astonished to wear his complete denture. After about three months of wearing, he was not able to wear it. And uh, here also lots of complaints including the fact that I don't look like me. He says, I'm not looking like me. So we wanted to repeat the whole prosthesis and <clears throat> repairing was not possible. So we decided to repair, uh, repeat the whole uh, complete dentures. But what was the problem? Most often the problem in complete denture is finding out the correct jaw relation records. Correct jaw relation record requires graphic tracing. And it is absolutely easy for each and every one of us to practice this jaw relationship in a very economical, you don't have to essentially buy a 15,000 or a 20,000 expensive uh, high tracers and articulators, but you can also make your own disposable uh, plastic. I'll be showing you right now and uh, how to achieve jaw relation. After you make the vertical and the approximate horizontal jaw relationship, you articulate it and these are the plastic intraoral traces which are disposable and it hardly costs about 40 rupees a set and this can be attached in the mandible and maxilla accordingly and it can be tried in the oral cavity 
and a true correct horizontal relationship for the vertical dimension given is achieved with this particular method and this is absolutely achievable absolutely achievable and you use a close mob impression so that you get a functional impression and the advantages of this intraoral tracing and the functional impression are very many absolutely very many it gives a better approximation a closer contact and better area of coverage and most importantly it is not a new concept it has been there for quite some time and then we are only trying to reinvent the whole thing so look at this the amount of tooth exposure happiness in the face and the eyes is the most important thing at the end of so removable prosthesis can also be given absolute importance and if you're going to meticulously do a jaw relationship we'll be able to achieve a good success also implant support prosthesis has its own a, a, a dose of complications this is the particular case uh, who came to us with for replacement of central incisors we replaced with an implant and, and a crown color match contour everything was satisfactory but unfortunately after about an year's time there was a constant oozing of exudates from the gingiva apical to the gingival contour of the uh, prosthetic crown so we tried all the antibiotics and things that we have decided to open up we raised the flap to see that there is a total dehiscence because of poor placement of the implant it has got nothing to do with the uh, the the implant per se or the patient but it was an operator's uh, mistake there was poor placement of the implant and uh, we curated the area and we also found a remnant of the tooth was left behind which could have been the cause for a bacterial invasion and the failure of the situation so the treatment strategies we have decided to repeat the whole thing post operative actually looks good because of the two dimensional pictures i should have made a cbct we would have got a better results but we didn't have the facility so we took only an opg and an iopa to assess it did not give a good results so we have decided to repeat the prosthesis we opened up removed the implant and did another osteotomy new osteotomy site was prepared new implant was placed and the defect was closed with hydroxy apatite a membrane suture was placed and after uh, osteo integration a prosthesis was placed and this is another case where there is a multi uh, uh, multiple tooth failure and uh, uh, this is a case um, which has been uh, given by dr arnachalam to me and uh, this has got an implant he has connected but not his case somebody else's case and uh, he, uh, uh, the implant was connected to the natural tooth the natural tooth went in for a failure there is a whole mobility of the uh, prosthesis and the treatment strategy we will never be able to repair this we cannot repeat this we have to essentially replant replanning is to remove the whole prosthesis along with the implant give additional implants to give better stability and we have decided to give a rigid connection an immediate loading protocol we removed the old prosthesis along with its teeth and placed the implant um uh, intentionally inclined uh, in, uh, uh, implants in the premolar uh, pre area and zygomatic implant and uh, gave a fixed prosthesis temporarily for some time followed after about 6 months time after osteointegration a definitive screw retained prosthesis so the take home message is failures are inevitable all efforts should be made to plan the prosthesis to come up so that we come across less amount of failures retreatment need not be replanning always teamwork is the mantra and let us not forget the role of technician we are extremely dependent especially as a prosthodontist restorative dentistry we are dependent on technicians the basic knowledge and expertise is absolutely you cannot know what is your strength if you feel that you are not good at it please do not try you train yourself uh, i'm sure the dental council of india is also coming up with a lot of uh, additional courses to enhance your knowledge so you can you can become an expert in that by acquiring additional uh, knowledge by attending uh, some courses especially suggested by the dental council of india and uh, the clinical acumen to choose the right material is very very important not always remember not always the best material gives best results it is all dependent upon the right choices and the dexterity and the clinical involvement of the operator jump to any conclusion immediately think about the treatment plan have two or three options 
suggested to the patient. Use clinical knowledge to render the patient at an affordable. The monetary leave we are also coming across or facing a lot of problem. Think in terms of a treatment which is affordable to the most of the population of our country and render the treatment that are effective and last long, long lasting. Most importantly, you have to be accountable to the society from which you are uh, coming from. The people who have paid for your education, you are dedicated to the society and you have to give it back. With this, I would like to conclude my lecture on retreatment strategies and uh, I thank again uh, the president of the Dental Council of India, Dr. Majunda sir, and the team behind this particular event and also a greatest effort by Virendra Goel sir and Dr. Mukesh sir for helping me out in this particular presentation. Thank you very much and I also thank Dr. Uday V. Gandhi for giving me a good introduction and uh, thanks very much for your patient hearing. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Dr. Padmanabhan. It was amazing and I'm sure all the viewers, listeners who have tuned in, they, they understand quite a bit about when to repair, when to repeat and when to replan. And if they're still in trouble, they know where to look to, whom to look to. So Dr. TV Padmanabhan, thank you so much for your fantastic presentation. I have a load of questions here, ladies and gentlemen, more than We'll go ahead and take a couple of questions. Dr. Padmanabhan, are you ready for the questions? Yes, sir. I am ready for the questions, sir. Great. So there is, there is a question which is about the patient, I mean, the scope of patient education uh, concerning the delivery of prosthesis, caries control, vis-a-vis -vis diet, and uh, home care. What do you have to say about this, sir? I mean, as, as a restorative dentist, now, let us face facts. Most of us are restorative dentists. And uh, uh, we do uh, crowns, we do perio, we do endo also. And uh, this combination is, uh, it takes up the major amount of dental work that we do in the clinic. So as we take enough care to fabricate and prepare the tooth, we must also spend time to instruct the patient regarding maintenance. Absolutely, if you're able to see in all the cases, I would have shown at least about 20 cases, in all these 20 cases, the major cause of the failure could have been only poor maintenance and absence of the patient reporting to the dentist periodically. So it is our bound duty to motivate the patient to brush incidentally, to maintain the prosthesis, and if at all there is going to be very minimal discomfort, they have to report to the dentist, either to the operator or to any other dentist nearby to make sure that everything is absolutely all right. Because the failure because of maintenance cannot be repaired at all. You have to only go for another replanning or repetition of the processes, which is expensive, which is expensive. Maintenance is much less expensive when compared to repetition or replanning. So you have to spend time. You have to tell them how to use a super floss, how to use a water jet or a water floss to cleanse, and then how important is it to maintain part of the treatment and you cannot escape from that. It is the responsibility of the operator. And uh, as you spend about 20 minutes on cementation, you have to spend at least 10 minutes on home care exercises also. That's right, sir. Thank you for emphasizing on this home care business. And of course, I, I hope viewers understand how important a recall is. Thank you, sir. Yes, sir. There will be another question for you, sir. What is the percentage of success rate for a crown over post-placement in a three-fourth damaged tooth following trauma? So if you have a three-fourth of the tooth that has been uh, uh, damage the rest of the teeth especially due to trauma the rest of the teeth are absolutely fine now you have to know what is the right kind of post that you are going to give now indiscriminately you cannot use the prefabricated post you have to also think in terms of using a custom made post there is a definitive indication for custom made post there is a definitive indications for a cast post 
Aesthetics is one part of dentistry. It is not the only part. Incidentally, if you're able to give aesthetics, it will be good. But the most important thing of any restoration is its functionality. It has to function in the oral cavity as a natural tooth. That is the basic purpose of any restoration. So if you are able to give a foundation restoration, which is going to assist in the longevity of a restoration, please do not hesitate. If two thirds of the tooth is fractured, I would prefer to go in for uh, a, a conventional or a, a regular prefabricated post, uh, a, a fiber reinforced composite post. But if three fourths of the tooth has been fractured, if the epic, uh, axial length of the tooth is not satisfactory to retain my crown, I would always prefer to go in for a cast post restoration. I mean, it is the fact by be, uh, being a, a lover of metals, I would also like to emphasize on the fact that retention is very important. You will never be able to get a retention with two millimeter apical height of or axial height of the tooth. So you have to build the height of the tooth or the axial length of the tooth with a cast post. So you have to have cast post also as one of the important uh, uh, treatment planning, especially when the fracture is involved more than three fourths. And the longevity of service is as good as a natural tooth. And most often, your restorations will not fail. The restorations will fail more because of periodontal degeneration rather than your restorative failures. So if the finish lines have been given properly, if a ferrule effect has been given properly, the restoration will service a minimum period of at least about 15 to 20 years time, unless the maintenance is going to be good. As I told you, the maintenance is a major, major uh, factor or the mantra for the success of the restorations. Dr. Padmanabhan, continuing in the same uh, direction, there's a question about what do you plan for very short clinical crowns? Our very short clinical crowns will always have a rotational failure. You will never be able to manage uh, using uh, an expensive cement to retain the crown. It is not possible. So in this particular situation, you have to change the choice of the material. You can either go in for an all metal restoration so that you will be able to create some rough surface on the metal, intaglio surface, tissue surface, the metal, and enhance retention with the help of cement. And most importantly is to change your, your strategy for the preparation. The preparation should have <clears throat> not only the seating grooves, but it should also have anti-rotational grooves in the proximal surfaces also. If you're going to see a rotational failures in case of a molar in the mandible is a buccal rotation. To prevent this buccal rotation, you are supposed to give a circumferential irregularity in the form of a box in the proximal surface or in the form of a groove in the proximal surface. It is preferable that you give grooves and boxes in both the mesial as well as the distal surface, which will prevent the rotational force and it will increase the longevity of service of the clinical crown. Mm -hmm. Thank you, sir. What do you think is the prognosis for uh, lower uh, fixed PFM crowns? Lower arch has the fixed PFM crowns versus uh, upper arch has got acrylic denture. Sir, the limitations of all the treatment is known not only to the, uh, uh, the operator, but it has to be taught to the patient also. If you're going to say that your complete removable denture opposing a ceramic <clears throat> fixed restoration in the mandible. It is going to function as a natural tooth. We are not telling the truth to the patient. You have to be very truthful. A removable appliance will have limitations. The maximum occlusal load it can take is up to only 28 to 30 newtons, which is absolutely less or one tenth when compared to the natural tooth. So when you have a natural tooth opposing the removable artificial to the masticatory efficiency will be less there will always be <clears throat> uh, you know loss of retention especially when the patient is chewing on one side so you have to motivate teach the patient how to eat and <clears throat> most often patients do learn this in a very very swift manner in, in in less than about one or two days time the patient will get adapted but if you are going to give a confidence saying that near yeah, you will be able to eat everything I don't think it is the right attitude. You have to tell the patient the truth about the limitations of the treatment. 
because it is not the limitations of you it is the limitations of the treatment so it is going to be the same universally absolutely absolutely sir we, we need to be truthful to our patients but there is a very interesting question by some of the people uh, they say what is the life typically of any prosthesis sir any removable prosthesis any removable prosthesis either it is a cast partial denture or a complete removable partial denture should comfortably should comfortably service for about 5 years after 5 years what happens is there is going to be uh, a loss of anatomy because of resorption in these situations if the occlusal surface is quite satisfactory you can just do a relining or rebasing depending upon the amount of loss of the anatomy very comfortably a removable prosthesis can service after relining another two more years whereas in cases of a fixed prosthesis if the axial length is satisfactory if the margin fit is good if the choice of material is perfect you know i mean i should not be saying it but anyway i have to say this uh, the, the 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 latest uh, uh, metal free ceramic restorations have specific indications you have to know what is the specific indications for that and then use it you cannot have an inlay a ceramic inlay a lithium disilicate inlay with a very 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 minimal preparation of 1 mm inlay no not possible at all it has to have a bulk at the isthmus it will fracture so unless you have specific indications do not use or experiment on the patient you have to use the right material in a fixed partial denture three unit fixed partial denture using porcelain fused metal will easily service for about 10 years if the impressions have been made properly and if the margins are good and if the right cement has been used very comfortably it will service for a minimum period of 10 years fantastic sir that's that's a long long duration thank you uh, in a, in the similar lines people are confused about where to keep the finish line subgingival or supra gingival it all depends upon the area if i would always prefer a posterior crown or a posterior fixed partial denture if the axial length is satisfactory i will always go for a uh, supra gingival or sometimes equi gingival in the anterior if the tooth color if the color of the tooth has not changed and uh, uh, there is not much of discoloration of the tooth i would also prefer to go for equi gingival if there is going to be a discoloration of the tooth i would like to go sub gingival and give a masking uh, material like a like a like a metal ceramic or a core zirconium core and then layering technique so depending upon the discoloration axial length and the retention required i go for a sub gingival or sub gingival gingival or equi gingival most often my preparation will be equi gingival very rarely it will be sub gingival right sir. and and also what happens in case there is gingival recession after placement of the fixed prosthesis how do you deal with it correct most often the uh, cause has to be determined in the anterior region whenever you are doing an anterior crown and if you are able to see the recession the recession is not going to happen overnight you sleep in the night and then tomorrow morning you see a 5 mm recession you don't come across that the recession is a slow long drawn process which is going to happen over a period of about 2 to 3 years time the minute you see a very minimal recession it is prudent of you to go to the nearby dentist or to the operator who has fixed the crown to recontour normally the recession is because of occlusal overloading or it could be because of poor contouring and very well be managed by occlusal adjustments of uh, by the uh, by the by the dentist and if it is going to be over contoured and you get a recession because of that if you change the crown it will become all right it will come back to the original position so if you know the cause of the recession you can very comfortably do that but whenever you are preparing a tooth which is already been receded you have to make sure that you give enough sluice ways for the food to flow so that there is gingival stimulation especially in a maxillary man uh, or a mandibular molar tooth 
you have to incorporate in the preparation what is called a fluting, which is going to be, uh, uh, which, is, which is going to allow the food to flow and stimulate the gingiva to keep them at health. Right, sir. Coming from uh, away from the gingiva now, let's let's look at some root canal confusions. People want to know if root canal should be considered important before placing any fixed prosthesis. Never. You have to be conservative. Never. Never. If a tooth, if all the crowns have to be root treated, I think that is that is not dentistry. That is not dentistry. That is certainly not dentistry. That is not. Uh, uh, the DCI is struggling for DCI is struggling for upliftment of ed, the dental education. This question should have never been asked. I'm sorry about this. You don't require root canal treatment before giving any crowns. No, unless it is required. Say if there is going to be a pulp involvement, either traumatically or because of disease, or during the preparation you feel you have to change the angulation as a precaution you can do. But not all crowns require root canal treatment. Absolutely, sir. Thank you. What, what do you think is the rate of bone loss uh, per year, sir? Is there any, any uh, guideline or... Uh... For an implant, it is considered to be 0 0.2 millimeters per year, which can be less also, which can very well be less. But in cases of uh, uh, natural tooth, uh, we don't normally come across unless there is going to be a super added... Uh, factor like uh, occlusal overloading, poor maintenance, bacteria. I'm sure the next week, doctor, uh, uh, there's going to be a few more uh, 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 DCI hunting dental education webinars, which will be explaining this. Right, sir. Thank you. Uh, can we, can we uh, get some information about the Lucia jig? What so the Lucia jig is, uh, yeah. is, a, is a mandatory uh, step that one has to follow, especially when you are altering the horizontal relationship. Whenever you increase or decrease the vertical dimension, the horizontal relationship also alters. So if you have to relate the horizontal relationship of the maxilla to the mandible for a given jaw separation, you have to use a Lucia jig, which is attached normally to the maxillary anterior teeth, which will give a total disseclusion of the posterior teeth. This will allow the whole mandible to move forwards and backwards, which is going to be governed primarily by the uh, tendon and the slopes of the glenoid fossa and the condyle. So this is a mandatory thing whenever you are trying to alter the horizontal relationship with the maxilla. And this is going to give a graphic and the correct recordable horizontal relationship of the jaw. Relationship. I mean, you will never be able to say this as an answer. I think you have to go through your textbooks and you must also attend a few uh, classes. There are lots of uh, textbooks which give about the Lucia jig. A little, uh, 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 you know, research on uh, this will certainly help in your private clinical practice. Right, sir. At what time period the prosthesis can be given after any crown lengthening procedure? I normally wait for maturation. It depends from, it, 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 it differs from three weeks to five weeks. So how will I know the maturation of the, uh, pros, uh, the, 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 the gingiva or a cut gingiva or the gingiva which has undergone surgery? There should not be any bleeding on probing. If there is no bleeding on probing, I consider that to be quite successful and I proceed with my uh, restorative work. Right, sir. We come to quick three last questions for you, sir. Yes, sir. Does ceramic repair work well? It is a transient uh, procedure. It is not a definitive procedure. If it is a very small fracture, it can service you for about one, one and a half years time. But if you think that this is going to serve as, as good as ceramic, we are not telling the truth. We are not telling the truth. It is not going to work as good as a cohesive ceramic. It is not going. It is a repair kit. It has got a life expectancy. Right, so, so replacement would be probably the right option for this. Yes, after some time. Right, sir. and then uh, people would want to know about how do you perform or how does one perform intraoral sandblasting? In short, if you can tell them a little bit, please. So there are intraoral uh, uh, sandblaster devices available, sir. And they are like a pencil, they are like a pen. It will be, it'll be as good, as small as a pen. And you can shield the rest of the 
area with a good uh, rubber dam and then sandblast it, wash it off. Right, sir. Hardly cost about four or five thousand rupees only, sir. That's right. Thank you, sir. And the last question for the day would be a very simple question. Someone has an, a confusion about a lot of people, in fact, about what kind of pontic would be the best for anterior tooth replacement. So for anterior tooth replacement, we still work on a modified uh, ridge lap where there is going to be a contact. And if at all you have to achieve good aesthetics, you can contour the gingiva over a period of time, maybe by repeatedly adding some material, especially polished acrylic material or peak to get a little depression to get a good emergence profile. So all these things are possible, absolutely possible. The most, most important thing is if the results have to maintain, you have to ask the patient to maintain at home the home care exercises to clean this subpontic area. You create a good pontic area and then give a good pontic, give a good emergence profile. And it is only not for photographic purpose alone. If you have to maintain, you have to teach the patients the home care exercises which will maintain this. So normally I would always prefer a modified ridge lap pontic for the anteriors. Right, sir. I think we have been able to address uh, majority of the questions from the viewers. Thank you so much, sir. I'm so happy that you have been able to drive home the points in the minds of uh, all of us that home care is so very important, a recall is important, and one must be able to decide by the use of whatever they have learned at the dental schools and such webinars that went to uh, re redo the case or went to replace, etc. Thank you so much, sir. I would uh, once again inform you, ladies and gentlemen, the highest attendance in the previous, the 13th webinar that happened on last Sunday, the last before, was Saraswati Dental College Lucknow, Sadar Patel Postgraduate Institute of Dental and Medical Sciences Lucknow, Vishnu Dental College Andhra Pradesh, St. Joseph Dental College Andhra Pradesh as well, and GSL Dental College and Hospital Rajamandri. Well, ladies and gentlemen, the feedback link will be sent to you on your uh, registered emails along with your certificates, e-certificates. Please find time, please do spend some time on furnishing us the feedback. Feedbacks are really important for improving any sort of endeavor. Please do do it. Thank you. And in case you are you're, uh, unable to uh, download for whatever reason, visit the Dental Council of India website, dciindia.gov.in, and you can see the download certificate icon. You can download your certificates. And also, if you have missed any of the webinars, please visit the webinar archive section, and you can uh, visit and see most of or all the webinars present there. And of course, uh, as uh, our presenter, Dr. Paranaban, was referring to, that we have a very interesting webinar coming up on the 18th October, Sunday next at 4 p.m. again, on non-surgical periodontal therapy. Dr. D. Gopalakrishnan from Pune would be presenting, speaking on this very interesting topic, and Dr. Jaydeep Mahendra from Chennai would be moderating the same. I would like to thank all the viewers once again for tuning in and encouraging us to continue with this endeavor of our president sir dr dibendu mujumdar the secretary dr shobhushachi saha the executive committee of the dental council of india all the members of dental council who have supported the staff once again of the office of dental council of india dr virender goel of course mukesh ji and, and I, I must also mention uh, thank you to the Webstream Communications. Thank you so much, ladies and gentlemen. Stay safe and, of course, stay healthy. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Uh, uh, Udaibir Gandhi, for uh, moderating my session. It was a pleasure uh, working with you. And I again thank the esteemed president of the Dental Council of India, Dr. Majumdar, sir. Dr. Saha, the secretary, Mukesh Ji, 
Virendra Goelji, and the, uh, the, the stream, uh, web stream people who have uh, facilitated me. And a special thanks to my friend, Dr. Rajkumar, also who's a member of the EDSA also. Thank you, all the participants. Thank you very much. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. We come to the end of this session today. See you on the next Sunday. Thank you. Stay safe. Jai Hind. Jai Hind.